everybody, welcome to our section 4.5 video lecture on problem solving with mixed numbers and estimating. So today we're finally getting to mixed numbers. Uh, we're going to learn uh, all about them and how to convert from improper fractions to mixed numbers and back and how to do some estimating. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to graph some numbers on the number line. So the first one I have is a mixed number, it's one and a half. So that, that's really like one plus a half, so it's a half more than one. So here's where one is in my number line. And so a half would be right here. Here's one, and here's one and a half would be right here, so a half more than one. In part B, we have four thirds, so I've divided into thirds here. So I'd have one third, two thirds, this is three thirds, which is one, and next is four thirds, which is where this number is, number line. In part C, I have one and a fourth. So here's the number one on my number line. One and a fourth would be a fourth more than that. So this is one and a fourth right here. Last one is seven fifths. So here I'd have one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths. Here's five fifths, which is one, six fifths, and seven fifths, right here. So let's talk about how do you convert from a mixed number to an improper fraction. So if you start out as a mixed number, like one and a half, how would you get that to be an improper fraction? Well, what you would do is you would multiply the whole part, which is the big number here, times the denominator, Uh, then we would add the numerator. The denominator stays the same whenever we're doing these conversions back and forth. Okay. So what this looks like, uh, so just give you an example of that one and a half. So one, here's like one whole rectangle and there's a half of another rectangle, a whole rectangle, and here's half. Well, if we wanted those as a mixed number, I could make these all in the halves. And so this would be two halves right here, plus that other half, which would give us three halves as an improper fraction. So when you're doing the whole part times the denominator, what you're actually doing is splitting the whole part into the same number, same size of pieces as that fractional part. So then you can add all the fractional pieces together. That top number is how many fractional pieces you have, and the bottom number is the size of the fractional pieces. Okay, let's try a few. My first one, I have three and a half. So if I want it as an improper fraction, I'm gonna take the whole part, the three, times the denominator, which is two, I'm going to do 3 times 2, which tells me how many little fractional pieces are in that 3. And then I'm going to add the 1 on top to add that last little fractional part. The denominator is going to stay the same, it's still going to be a 2. So just working that out a little bit, 3 times 2 would be 6, and then 6 plus 1 is 7, so this would be 7 halves. Let's do another one. In part B, I have four and three sevenths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply four times seven, which would be 28. Then I'm gonna add the three from the numerator, which would be 31. Then the denominator stays the same, it'll still be seven. So this mixed number, four and three sevenths, is the same as 31 sevenths as an improper fraction, okay? Let's do another one. We've got nine and a half. So I'll do nine times two, which would be 18. Then that 18 plus the one on top would be 19. The denominator stays the same. It'll be 19 halves as an improper fraction. All right, let's try one more. And this one, I'll let you guys have a moment. We have five and 12 over 33. See if you can take a minute, uh, pause your video, See if you can get this one as an improper fraction. 
and I will tell you the answer here in three, two, one. You should get 177 over 33. How'd you guys do? Did we do okay? Now that we have that down, let's go the other way. Uh, what if we have an improper fraction, but we would like to have a mixed number? What if we want to go backwards? So what you're going to do is you're actually going to divide. Okay? You're going to divide and think, how many whole pieces could I make? And then the fractional part is your remainder. Okay? So the whole number would be how many times the denominator goes into the numerator. You're essentially dividing here. Okay, you're gonna do some division. Think how many times does three go into seven? How many times does five go into nine, okay? That amount would be your whole number. This is the amount of whole pieces we could make out of it. The numerator of our fractional part is just gonna be the remainder after you've done that. And the denominator stays the same because the size of our pieces isn't changing. So let's try a few. The first one I have is 7 thirds. So the first thing I'm thinking is how many times does 3 go into 7? 3 goes into 7 two times. Now just a little reminder, 2 times 3 would be 6, right? And so if I do 2 times 3 equals 6, our remainder would be how many more times do I need, how many more do I need to get from 6 to 7? Or you could just do subtraction. You could do 7 minus 6. Our remainder is 1. So 1 is the numerator. Our denominator stays the same, it's still 3. So this would be 2 in the third as a mixed number. Let's try another one. I have 9 fifths. So the first thing I'm thinking is how many times does 5 go into 9? Well, 5 would only go into 9 once. 1 times 5 is 5. 2 times would be 10 and that would be too many times. So 1 times 5 would be 5. So then in part C you have 19 over 2. In part D you have 235 over 211. See if you can turn those from improper fractions to mixed numbers. And I'll give you the answers to those in 3, 2, 1. For part C, you should 9 and a half. For part D, you should get 1 and 24 over 211. Okay. Hopefully that went all right for you guys. The next thing we're going to do is some estimating. So we're going to estimate each answer using front end rounding, and then we'll find the exact answer by actually performing the operations. Uh, we'll answer as a mixed number, proper fraction, or an integer. So we're not going to have any improper fractions and definitely no decimals on this one. So let's go ahead and do that estimate first. In part A, I have 3 and 1 fourth times 5 and 2 thirds. So if I'm estimating with front end rounding, I'm going to round for the 3. 1 fourth, uh, you're thinking, does it round up or round down? Well, it's less than a half. So that means that it's going to round down to 3. Then let's look at the 5 and 2 thirds. If I round this one, that 2 thirds is more than a half. So half of 3 would be 1.5, and 2 is bigger than that. So this is going to round up. So the 5 would round up to 6. Then I'll do the multiplication. 3 times 6 is 18. That's my estimate. Okay, now let's do the exact number. When you're doing the exact for these, my recommendation would be turn them into improper fractions so we can do it just the way we've been doing it in previous sections, okay? No need to borrow or carry or anything silly. Um, it'll, it'll be a little more straightforward that way, okay? So turn them into improper fractions first. So three and one fourth as an improper fraction would be four times three, which is 12, plus the one on top is 13. So I've got 13 over four times 
For 5 and 2 thirds, 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 would be 17, so this would be 17 thirds. Nothing simplifies. Uh, 13 isn't divisible by 4 or 3. 17 isn't divisible by 4 or 3. Nothing simplifies. So we're going to multiply straight across. 13 times 17 is 221. 4 times 3 is 12. And that is a correct answer, but it's not in the format that it's looking for, because in the instructions, it said answer as a mixed number, proper fraction, or integer. Well, this is an improper fraction, so I need to turn it back. So I'm thinking, how many times does 12 go into 221? It ends up going 18 times and having a remainder of 5. So my answer would be 18 and 5 twelfths. Okay, let's do another one. In part B, I have some division for you. I've got 8 and 5 6 divided by 3 and an eighth. So for my estimate, I'm going to round both using front end rounding. So I'm rounding my 8 with the 5 6. That's a lot closer to the next number up than to 0. It's above a half. So that 8 will round up to 9. For the 3 and 1 eighth, 1 eighth is hardly anything, right? It's nowhere near a half. A half would be 4 eighths, and 1 is less than that 4 eighths. So we'll round down to 3. Then I can do my division. 9 divided by 3 would be 3. So that's my estimated answer. I think my answer is going to be close to 3. To find my exact answer, I'm going to do the same thing I did in part A which is that I'm going to make them into improper fractions first. 6 times 8 is 48, and 48 uh, plus 5 is 53. So I'll have 53 over 6 divided by, then for the 3 and 1 8, 8 times 3 is 24, plus 1 would be 25. So it would be 25 over 8. Then, if you guys remember about doing division, um, what I'm going to do is multiply by the reciprocal. So I'll change it to a multiplication problem. I'll still have 53 over 6, but now it's multiplying. The reciprocal has the denominator and the numerator switched. So I'll have 8 over 25. Um, we only have a little bit of simplifying here. 6 and 8 are both divisible by 2, so I can do that. 6 divided by 2 is 3, 8 divided by 2 is 4, then I can multiply straight across. So then I'll have 50, uh, goodness, 53 times 4, which is 212, 3 times 25, which is 75, and then I'm not in the format they're looking for. I need to change it to a mixed number since it's currently an improper fraction. So 75 goes into 212 two times. 2 times 75 is 150. So that means that I'll have a remainder of 62. And the denominator stays the same. So as a mixed number, this would be 2 and 60 over 75. All right. You guys about ready for the next one? Okay, for this one, I'm going to let you guys have a minute to try that estimate. Okay, see if you can round both of those, and then just do the subtraction. So I'll give you guys a minute just to try the estimate. Pause your video real quick, and then I'll give you guys the answer in 3, 2, 1. 7 and 1 fifth rounds to 7. 2 and 4 fifteenths rounds down to 2. So you should have 7 minus 2, which is 5 for our estimate. All right. Uh, I'll give you guys a minute for the exact. You guys should know how to do these from the previous, but let's see if you guys can get it from a mixed number to an improper fraction. Uh, and then I'll let you have a second to do the subtraction, okay? So just get it to be an improper fraction here. And I'll give you those in 3, 2, 1. All right, you should have 36 over 5 minus 34 
over 15. Okay? Now to actually do our subtraction, our LCD would be 15. So we'll multiply that first fraction by 3 over 3. 3 times 36 is 108. The second fraction already has the least common denominator, so it just gets to stay the same. Now I have 108 over 15 minus 34 over 15, which would be 74 over 15. And it's still not in the same format that they're looking for. It's not an improper fraction. It's not a proper fraction, it's improper. Uh, so we will convert that to a mixed number. Let's see, 15 goes into 74 four times. Four times 15 is 60. We'd have a remainder of 14. So it's almost five, it's four and 15, 14 fifteenths. It's one fifteenth away from our estimated answer, which is pretty good. All right. All right, last one, part D. I'm gonna let you guys try the whole thing by yourselves, okay? See if you can get the estimate. See if you can get the exact answer. And I will go over those in three, two, one. For the estimate, you should have five plus one, which would be six. For the exact answer, you'll have 44 ninths plus 13 twelfths. Uh, your LCD would be 36. So then you would have 176 over 36 plus 39 over 36, which would give you an answer of 215 over 36, which is the number, but not in the format that we're looking for. As a mixed number, this would be 5 and 35 over 36, which is only 1 away from our estimate, which is pretty great. All right. Last one here is a word problem. The instructions for a liquid fertilizer say to mix one and three quarters tablespoons for each gallon of water. If your watering can can hold three and a half gallons of water, how much liquid fertilizer will you mix with those three and a half gallons of water? All right, so what we're doing is we're mixing liquid fertilizer and water um, so this one says that you mix one and three quarters tablespoons for each gallon. So for one gallon, you would use one and three quarters tablespoons. Uh, for two gallons, you would use twice that. For three gallons, you would do three times that amount. So for three and a half gallons, we would use three and a half times that amount. So what you're really doing is three and a half times one and three fourths. So if we want to estimate our answer, we're going to do that front end rounding. So we have three and a half, and it's exactly a half. Do you guys think we're going to round up or round down? We would round up. If you want to think about it, a half is 0.5. That would be a five as the next number over. We would round up to four. For one and three fourths, would we round up or round down? We would round up again. Four times two would mean that we're gonna have about eight tablespoons of liquid fertilizer. All right, find the exact amount. We'll go ahead and do the multiplication. So three times two is six, plus the one on top is seven. So this is seven halves times Four times one is four, plus the three on top would be seven, so we'd have seven-fourths. Nothing simplifies. I know that you're thinking, can we simplify the sevens? No, because they're both in the numerator. What about the two and the four? They're both in the denominator, so nothing simplifies out. So we'll multiply straight across. Seven times seven is 49. Two times four is eight. And that's an answer, but I'm guessing they're gonna want things in as a mixed number since we started out with mixed numbers. So let's see, eight goes into 49 six times. Six times eight is 48, which only has a difference of one. So we'd have a remainder of one eighth. So our exact answer is six and one eighth tablespoons. And this is less than our estimate, which is not really surprising since we rounded both of these up. 
So since I rounded both up, I would expect that this is larger than my actual answer. But it's still in the, in the neighborhood. Um, hopefully this helps you guys get started this week. Um, have a wonderful week.